Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with rumours concerning the release date for Zen 3. Zen 3, of course, is going to be the last socket-compatible CPU in the Zen processor lineup i.e. you will be able to plonk, let's say, a Ryzen 4000 series CPUs in your current AM4 motherboards, providing the caveats such as your motherboard vendor actually releasing an up-to-date BIOS remain true. We also learned some details of the Zen 3 architecture thanks to a HPC event which was taking place in Europe. AMD attended and obviously were giving a lecture of sorts of what we could expect for the Zen 3 architecture and also Milan. Milan being the server processors which will be succeeding Rome. And by we, I actually don't mean the general public because there was kind of an oopsie. Basically what happened is that the conference was supposed to be uh, for just select individuals basically important folks who work in data centers like the Dells of the world for AMD to insist that they are super super serious about having an awesome roadmap. I am of course being a little hyperbolic here but you kind of get my idea. Anyway that event was subsequently uploaded to YouTube and that was kind of an oopsie because there were several details there that I don't think AMD wanted to go out to the lot to the public at large. Not least of all, there were changes in, let's say, the CCX of the Zen 3 architecture. I have gone into this extensively in the past, which is why I'm glazing over it here. And there was also a roadmap which seemed to detail a couple of things, including the fact that we would see 64 cores on Milan again. By the way, a source of mine has basically confirmed that that's almost certainly true, that we will only be seeing 64 cores of Milan. Uh, but, yeah. And furthermore, they've said um, in this roadmap that it's SMT2, which I've also heard from a source as well. Uh, yeah, so basically, most of these details I've gone extensively before. The reason I'm bringing this up, though, and mentioning a release date is because several websites and also people on social media are using this to extrapolate that the release date for Zen 3 and its, you know, corresponding series of CPUs is going to be the second half of 2020. And there's actually a problem with that, and that is that if you look at the dates of the roadmap that AMD are using, they don't actually necessarily correspond accurately to the release dates of their predecessors. So, for example, if you look at uh, Naples, although you can't see when the tape, tape out of Naples, I don't know why I found that difficult to say, uh, was occurring, you can see that the production date of Naples was essentially in the Q2 period-ish, so Q3. The problem is, though, you can also do a quick uh, search yourself and look at the date when Epic first generation, just to clarify, launched, and, well, that was not gonna work timeline wise uh the reason is of course Na uh, the first generation uh, naples launched in june and amd are not going to launch a product without actually having any product produced um I, I can't put it any other way and you can also check out the release at uh, rome as well uh because the production of rome is basically late q2 early Q3, and you can see yourself that, well, let's say the Ryzen 3000 series, that launched in July. So basically what I'm saying is that the production, uh, first of all, the release date of Naples, Rome, Milan, blah, 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 is not actually necessarily tied to the launch date of the uh, consumer-facing SKUs like Ryzen. And secondly, the tape-out and production also don't necessarily equate to the release dates in reality. They're more, well, there's a lot of text on the slide and it's kind of like just to show a rough time schedule. It's not an exact one. With that said though, you can actually see, uh, unless something does change different, uh, change uh, based upon AMD's previous behavior, that the release schedules for Zen has gotten a little bit later every time. And so maybe we will probably see, and this is just a guess, the release dates 
um, of the Zen 3 based CPUs be the second half of 2020. And I don't think it's going to be any sooner, to be honest with you. But I don't think you can base that on a roadmap. I think you can just base that upon the fact that, let's say, the Ryzen 3000 series has been July. So you can assume it's going to be at least 12 months before they'll want to replace it. Uh, particularly given that they're not really facing enough pressure at the moment from Intel. Although, we'll see what the heck Comet Lake brings to the table. I'm not... yeah. Uh, and obviously, on the server side of things, they do want to maintain a lot of aggression there because obviously it's keeping intel on the back foot but the long story short i think it's going to be at least a year before we see those SKUs replaced but you can't base that upon a roadmap essentially next up we have a benchmark of the gtx 1660 super i'm going to make this quite quick uh, this was actually discovered on the Benchmark database for Final Fantasy 15 by Tim Apisak, and it is at the 1440p resolution with high quality. Now, Final Fantasy 15 benchmark is not actually the greatest benchmark in the world. In fact, several times I've actually had the benchmark really screw up on me. I actually had uh, the characters literally running in a completely wrong direction or just spinning on the spot. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, but Assuming it does run correctly, it's not a terrible benchmark to give an indicator of performance, particularly on NVIDIA cards. Not so great with uh, AMD cards, though. Uh, anywho, I'm getting off topic. What we have is a GTX 1660 Super, and it scores 4,794 points. So that's just under 100 points uh, less than the 1660 Ti. But it absolutely ruffle stomps the GTX 1660 Vanilla. Which is actually not bad given the price disparity between these two cards. Well actually that makes it sound like there is a big difference. There is essentially bupkis difference between the 1660 and the 1660 Super. So honestly that's not bad. That's a bigger uh, bump in performance than I was expecting. I'm still not excited about the card because it doesn't bring anything super duper new to the table. But with that said, I'm not against it. Maybe I'm going to get some dislikes for this, but I kind of have the level of excitement for the 1660 Super as I did with uh, AMD's launch of the RX 590. Like, it's nice that it provides customers extra options, but it's just not super exciting in terms of a launch. And now we're going to move on to some PlayStation 5 news. Uh, the first of which is that Sony are calling this console the fastest console in 2020. This was uh, the description that was listed in a job advert that was discovered by a user on Reset Era. Uh, the position is for a senior cloud engineering manager. I'm going to read out the uh, couple of sentences that are pertinent. You will be managing distributed systems that are powering 100 million plus PlayStation 4 consoles that deliver immersive gaming experiences. You, yes you, will also be one of the leaders of an elite team that are super excited to launch the upcoming world's fastest console, the PS5, in 2020. You can take this job ad several different ways. The first of which is that Sony are just using confident messaging with their job ad because once again they want to attract the best talent. The second is that they are very confident that the PS5 will be the fastest console even when the Scarlet launches. I'm pretty certain that Sony would have at least some decent understanding of what Microsoft are doing for the Xbox Scarlet. Um, after all, we kind of know the vague details of Scarlet, but Microsoft haven't really released that much to the public. Sony have been a lot more leaky, so to speak. We have a lot more of a understanding of what's going on with the PS5, simply because of the Gonzalo APU. We'll get to that in just a second. But I think Sony themselves would have a much better uh, understanding, a much better privy of what's going on inside Microsoft than what we would. I don't think that it's not going to be AMD are kind of sharing this information and be like, oh yeah, by the way, Microsoft are doing this with their APU because obviously that would be breaking a lot of uh, contracts. Instead, it's probably um, 
developers, to be honest with you, uh, large developers like EA or whatever, all it takes is one person to accidentally whisper something at a party and Sony overhear it. I'm not saying they do know, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised if they have at least some level of understanding what Microsoft are doing. The other option is that, well, yeah, it will be the fastest console because Sony are going to launch their console first. Now, we don't know that for certain, but it's potentially possible that it, that's all it could be. Given our own lack of understanding of the full specifications of the system, I don't think that we can actually call which of the two consoles, the Scarlet or the PS5, is going to be the most powerful. Uh, judging actually from the specifications that have either been officially released or leaked, both machines at the moment are kind of close to one another, but we are missing key characteristics of both consoles. We are missing the number of compute units on both systems. We're lacking the knowledge of, oh, little things like the amount of memory on both consoles, the bandwidth for both consoles, what architectural enhancements Sony and Microsoft are asking for on their respective systems, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we can kind of get an understanding of what's going on with the PS5 and uh, Xbox Scarlet, but we can't get a full picture. I've actually recently released an exclusive where I've been told that the PS5 has inferior ray tracing to the Xbox Scarlet, but that is not actually giving a full picture of what's going on with the rest of the performance of the system. So, for example, yes, it could have inferior ray tracing capabilities, but perhaps it has superior rasterization capabilities. I'm not saying it does, but we don't really know that yet. And we also have some more news concerning the PlayStation 5, and it's being reported that the release date and the price for the console has actually leaked thanks to a Slovakian retailer. Uh, this is at the website known as Pro Gaming Shop. Uh, credit to comicbook.com who managed to grab this first, although now the uh, listing itself has been deleted, scrubbed, or reduced to atoms, whatever meme you want to use. The console was said to be 500 uh, euros, which converts to about 550 uh, US dollars, but you can't really do that. You can't really do a simple conversion uh, when it comes to pricing. Most likely, this is going to mean that the PS5 is going to cost you like 500 US dollars, assuming this uh, rumor is accurate. Furthermore, we also have a release date. It said that the uh, PS5 will launch on December 4th. Uh, and once again, it is going to cost you 500 US dollars. This is actually not the first time we've heard that price uh, for the PS5. Actually, a developer uh, last year said uh, that the PS5 would start at 499 US dollars, which is obviously way more expensive than what the PS4 le uh, released at and is actually much closer to the PS3 when it launched, and we all know that people were very frustrated with the PS3 pricing. I've also heard some murmurs that the PS5 is actually, even at 500 bucks, potentially going to actually still cost Sony money per console sold. In other words, they're going to lose money per system, or at the very best, break even. Although it's very difficult to do a cost analysis because we don't know things like the yields of the PS5 APU. We don't know the capacity of the drive in the system. Heck, to be honest, we don't know any of the real internal components to do a cost analysis of the consoles. So let me know if you'd be willing to cough up 500 bucks for the PS5. I get the feeling that the next generation Xbox is not going to be much cheaper though, to be honest with you. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then definitely drop a like and of course subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon because subscribing in the eyes of YouTube is just never enough. But I'm going to wish you all an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.